Hello, everyone. I'm Will Perez. Today, I'm going to be talking about at the edge of OT, i.e., remote connectivity into your sensitive networks, right? Um, oh, sorry, I forgot this. If I'm a little raspy, I'm, I apologize ahead. I was celebrating a lot on Sunday. Um, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in network security for about 12 years, WAN, LAN, firewalls. Um, and recently, about a year ago, I, I'm kind of leading the vision, or I'm leading the vision strategy and in information security at Connecticut and main water companies. Um, we serve about 300,000 customers in both states. Um, we have about 150 remote operators that serve in service delivery, uh, 30 remote sites, including uh, water treatment, and uh, just offices, and then we have about 200 satellite uh, sites that deliver water, right? Um, pump stations, what have you, okay? So some of the things, um, and again, I'm gonna be talking some of the pain points I went through uh, with remote connectivity into our OT network, um, and some of the re requisites um, that we had, or, or that we have now. So um, things we needed for remote access to get into the OT, need to be 24-7. You have to serve your customers at all times. Um, you have to have multi-factor authentication to get into OT. Um, it has to be isolated. Our, our OT environment is completely isolated. Um, and then, of course, everything has to be up. We already talked about that. Yeah. So back in the day, if everyone, I don't know how many people have uh, talked to operators, but this is how they used to do it, right? They used to RDP into some of their machines either from a public segment or from a corporate segment. Well, that's great for the operator because within or less than a minute, they can get in, right? For security folks, not so great. You name the attack in the MITRE frame, uh, attack simulation, and you can get through this pretty easily. Um, you can do a credential hash and see what's going on. Uh, so that when I heard about that, as an engineer, when I came to Connecticut Water, I kind of cringed, I'll be honest with you. But the first thing I thought is, how could we make this more secure and really work with OT to get them up and running? Well, we tried something. Well, this is not secure. We tried this, right? So we had a VPN. They came in through the VPN, dual factor authentication. They would go into a jump host in the corporate segment, right? They have to put in their credentials. Then go to a jump host in the SCADA segment or in the DMZ out in the SCADA uh, world another set of credentials, and then RDP into their SCADA clusters, HMIs, uh, you know, anything Windows-related or Linux-based. Well, for an operator, that took about five to 10 minutes. And if you have ever been next to an operator trying to uh, operate like a, a water treatment plant or just deliver water, that's a long time, especially if there's an emergency, an outage. So, you can imagine, that's too complicated, and you get some of this, right? Two o'clock in the morning, they're calling you. Listen, I forgot my password. I forgot my PIN. I don't know how to get in. They're freaking out, and some of them do look like that. They're kind of really freaking out, right? Um, and you as an engineer just need to get them through. And honestly, just like Jason said, they're not really thinking about security right here, right? They just need to address the problem and get it done. I don't know how many people have seen this or have encountered this, but this is pretty real here at Connecticut Water. So we took a year to redesign and really go to the business. And the first thing I did was I went to the service delivery. I went to service delivery and asked the questions, what are the pain points? Too many passwords, too many pins, it's just too complex. You know, I did, dry, I did some drive-bys with them. I actually did some service delivery to understand the process that they went through, right? Um, a day in the life, we call it. And it, I took about three months doing interviews with almost every employee at service delivery. It's quite tedious, but I really wanted to know from each of them what their pain points were, and everyone said the same thing. Remote connectivity into our OT network is virtually impossible for them because they can't remember all these passwords, right? And all these pins. So, our challenge was, getting something to meet our security criteria or go beyond that and make it easy for operators to use. 
So we partnered with Dispel. I'm not going to shameless plug there, but again, we, we partnered with Dispel. One, it made it easier for our users, right? As opposed to five, 10 minutes, one minute. Now, on the security side, I'll go back here. We wanted to enhance security even more, right? So here is encrypted. That's great and all. But what, up, what about here and here? Not so much. If you have an RDP session or something happens in your corporate environment that there's some kind of threat actor, they could still do something at this layer. So we want to step up our game and see if we could mitigate risk further. So one of, it, one of the criteria was encryption. Could you encrypt from one point to the other, from the outside to SCADA, fully encrypt the tunnel? In this case, sorry, they could. They use two layers. So an underlay, encryption from whatever service you pick. We picked Amazon or we're using Amazon. One layer and then an overlay. The entire overlay was encrypted into your uh, uh, network. Standard AES 256, 49, uh, 4096-bit RSA encryption. High standards. The other was, could you remote uh, remotely connect into your network and be completely isolated at the same time. Previously, you couldn't with a jump host. You still had a connection to the outside. You still had a connection to the corporate world some, of some sort with an RDP session. With this, it was completely isolated. We pen tested the crud out of it to really make sure that was the case. Um, so once you get in, you're in, and you're only focusing on SCADA, and there is no contamination whatsoever. And then access control, least privilege, making sure that the proper personnel got what they needed. So essentially, what this product does, this bell does, is it does everything we're doing with jump hosts, encrypts that. Oops. And keeping the user happy at the same time. All they see is an agent or a client for them. They put in their credentials in the OT side, dual factor, and they're in. Their whole path is encrypted. Uh, their experience is, their efficiency is uh, increased. So within the minute, they're already in the OT network operating, and they don't have to worry about no visibility for five to 10 minutes. They don't have to worry about any of the pain points. Um, that they, that they were going through previously. And then for us as security professionals, we know that from start to finish, the whole entire process is secure. So again, things we wanted to uh, consider, multi-factor authentication, strong encryption from start to finish, improving security, and then things that it does can have full Active Directory integration on our OT side, which we have. Simplifies um, permissions. You don't have to kind of look at all your firewall rules. And just a little side note, this also decreased um, like the workload for our IT professionals, right? Or for our InfoSec guys. All the firewall rules that we had to do to sustain kind of these jump posts, I think we had 150 rules, okay? That's a lot, all right? A lot of poking in your firewall. Um, and we weren't comfortable with that, right? So with the spell, one firewall rule and the protocol that you wanted to let through. It was that easy. That's it, short and sweet.